Hello everyone. Today is a new day and it is definitely a news day. And so when I say a news day, what I mainly intend for you to take from today's video is a deeper understanding of the voice of the people in terms of what is being reported in the news versus what people on the ground actually think and how they feel. So as we know, what's been in the news lately, largely for the past week or so, is the media's insistence on blowing up this whole variant. And because this is a social media platform, I can't say specifically what I wanna say, so I'm gonna have to try to work through <laughs> the words because I don't want uh, the video to be uh, taken down or blocked in any kind of way. But I do want to share a little bit of what I'm noticing and just in my travels, what I've learned from a number of people around the world. And so obviously I've had the benefit of traveling to a number of countries over the past several months. And what I can tell you is before we get the variant that's being discussed in the news, we get the whole purpose of the, the pandemic, right? And although people believe the virus, I guess, is that what we're calling it? I don't know if it's a virus or what. But although people believe the virus is very real, a lot of people uh, around the world tend to feel that the media as well as uh, some of the the local and national and international govern government officials are making a bigger deal about it than what should be made and so i ask you and you're welcome to put your thoughts in the comment section is this whole variant that we're seeing all over the news is it a hustle to get more people vaccinated. And I, I can't say that I have an opinion one way or another about it. I believe any and all things are possible, especially if I don't know what's really going on. But I am going to share with you in this video what some of those folks who, some may label them conspiracy theorists, some may say they're skeptics, and some may say that these folks are, are critical thinkers. What I say is that it's something to consider when, when you don't have all of the answers to everything. And so what I noticed over the past week in the news is the media sort of, again, blowing up the story. And I remember watching a segment on World News and the anchor was saying that so many people are scared and this Omicron variant has a lot of people uh, fearful and worried. But at the same time, they said two and a half million people were set to travel. And they also highlighted this art gallery. I believe the art gallery was in New York. Uh, is set to open and ex expecting 100,000 visitors to come through to this art gallery. And so I'm thinking, if people are really scared, why do you have the cameras in airports showing the large amount of travelers that are traveling over and throughout the holidays if people are fearful? Why do you have cameras parked in this art gallery and showing this flow of traffic in the art gallery and discussing how it's expected that the art gallery is going to get at least 100,000 visitors. It just doesn't add up with the narrative that we're being told. And so it, it causes you to really ask some really critical questions about who's really fearful. Is it the people who are fearful? Is it the government who's fearful? Is it the media who's fearful? And the other question too is, how do you measure fear? Do you measure fear by the number of people who are in a location or participating in a certain activity? Because if that's the case, 
during the height of the, the situation, we were all forced to pretty much stay in our homes. So how do you measure fear? It seems that when it comes to what's being reported on the news, the news media is making a claim that people are fearful, but the evidence and the facts that they're telling about it is showing the complete opposite of everything they're saying. So I, so I think we have to consider what's being said, but we also have to watch what's being done. What is said in the news media is very, very different than what people are saying on the ground. And so what people are saying on the ground is they're wondering if this whole Omicron variant that's showing up in Africa, and by the way, during the height of the situation, and I'm only saying situation because I can't say certain words, during the height of the situation, the whole entire continent, all 54 countries in Africa had the lowest numbers of infections, had the lowest number of deaths. But now all of a sudden the Omicron variant is showing up only in that particular part of the world. And now they're showing places that the Omicron variant is spreading to based off of people who were in that part of the African continent. It's just a little fishy and I'm a little skeptical about that. Because from my time recently in visiting South Africa, I've always said that my experience was the South Africans, their systems and processes that the processes that they have in place are very, very uh, strict. It's way more strict than here in the United States. Like you can't walk five feet without having to sanitize your hands. Like they have places for you to sanitize, wipe your hands down. You have to have on a mask. And there are oftentimes, if you're walking in a store, they're likely to point like a temperature gun at your forehead. Like those measures aren't even in place here in, in the United States. So it's very, very clean and very, very sanitized in the country of South Africa. And so many people actually feel that this whole variant campaign is really designed to get more Africans to agree to become vaccinated. That is what the conversation is on the ground, okay? So I wanna put that out there for you to consider and drop your comments below on whether or not you think there's merit to it or not. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just sharing what, you, what I've learned from uh, the conversations that I've had with brothers and sisters uh, in the African diaspora, on the African continent, what their thoughts are. Uh, many are upset with the different measures that are being implemented in their country that's really um, leaning more towards forcing them to get the backs, to get inoculated. <laughs> okay, I almost said the word. Uh, so many are upset about that. The other interesting theory that people have forwarded is part of the reason why you're seeing this whole presence of the Omicron variant uh, being situated in South Africa and some of the uh, other African countries is because these are governments who have come to understand how they can run game on who uh, the world which stands for the world health organization as a way of getting and finessing more money out of the world health organization because if you say we have a variant if you say we have all of these new cases that are popping up and it is ultimately threatening humanity <laughs> you know not just on the african continent but beyond and we could be in the face of uh, another pandemic, unless we get this under control, like a lot of people are suggesting that this may be a way of them getting money and resources 
within their country so that they can actually make some decisions, not just about the health related stuff and protecting their citizens, but also lining some of their pockets and you know being able to use that money for other things. I don't know if that's true or not. I'd actually like to leave that those two questions or two or three questions to all of you for you to decide and drop a comment below hit the like button hit the subscribe button i'm very curious as to your thoughts these don't even represent my thoughts <laughs> fully and completely they represent what i've heard throughout the time that i've been traveling uh, the african continent so thank you ladies and gentlemen until next time